Hello, my name is Shadley and welcome back to another episode of the Last Kingdom in Aurora Forex. And in previous episode we did test our um, <laughs> um, point defense ships mostly against the Precursors and that went horribly wrong. Now the ships have returned home and all that, we'll skip a fair bit ahead. And I was actually sending, or oh, I already had a fleet going to Diamond, although it was going around the other way. I still it wasn't in Shamshir, so it hadn't gotten that far. Um, this is just the detachment from it, but there's a one paladin and one hornet as the fighting force, and then there was the uh, carrier and the uh, su support ship, or the supply and tanker ship helping in there. But now we have noticed that there's another fleet, actually it's been approaching for a day or so already, or more than that, but we spotted it about a day ago or something like that. We actually got a survey ve vessel over there, but we do still have an oiler over here. It does have a lot of fuel actually. But yeah, um, it seems like um, there might be an invasion happening because if we uh, actually, we can probably close that, open the intel, so ascendancy of uh, Kunming. So first things first, uh, let's just check. The, so the, my car said that seems to be a um, commercial vessel, or at least it has commercial engines. Uh, not coming as in my car said. Um, yeah, it's commercial engines. It is a fairly large ship. I did some calculations and it's probably somewhere around 73 kilotons, assuming that the engines don't have any thermal reduction. So it is quite sizable. And then there's a Mogami, which we know that is a point defense ship. We've destroyed one of them. But there is another one in there. Then there's a castle, which we actually have got on the entire like information about we are spying. And that has a lot of partial, or oh, three partial lances. It's a uh, decent range. The speed is actually over 6,000 kilometers per second, which I'm slightly surprised. I mean, our ships are faster these days, but still, I'm a little bit surprised. Oh wait, that has a meter plasma drive. I wonder. Well, I don't see anything in there. Is there any other ones that we've gotten the entire design? This one. No, that's also Magnesium Plasma. Uh, we are getting the next level engines though, aren't we? Yes, we are. This is going to take over a year. But we are getting that. Um, then, uh, in addition to the Castle and Megamis, there's some uh, Kageros, which we know that those seem to be more or less point of ships as well, judging by the active sensors. And was there anything else? Actually, let's close that one and... No, Castle Kagero, Megami, uh, and Mikaze. That's the only ones that we can see right now. But these don't seem to be quite as big as the others. Um, but yeah, they are approaching, so it's going to take about 15 days for our support to arrive here. Now, we do still have the orbital weaponry down here at the moon. It's actually... Take a look. How long distance is this again? It's about 350, more or less. So even if we had uh, more up-to-date STOs in there, it still wouldn't be good enough. But if there's a build cycle still in between, which there might... No, I don't think there's going to be. Mm, yeah, probably not. But let's uh, keep on going a little bit forward. But if there's a build cycle, the moon just might go in between the planet and the enemy fleet and then do some damage. Nope. Oh, and they got the axes on. Oh, right, with the axis sensors, they can actually see our troops on the ground there. And probably the SDOs. But that's bad because they do have the rate. Actually, I think we have the same range, don't we? Uh, if we have a look at the STO targeting... Oh no, we only got 200,000 kilometers on there, so they do outrange our STOs there. But it will probably take some time for them to destroy them if they are starting to shoot at them. Let's get a little bit closer again. We'll probably take a 3-hour increment. 
or two of them, maybe. But yeah, this is going to be potentially an inv invasion fleet. We do have some troops in there, both the moon and the planet itself, but not enough to necessarily fight back a proper invasion, although we've had time to dig in quite well. So there's a chance. There's also a chance that they're just going past us, because that doesn't look like it's heading directly to the planet. Oh, I think they're going to satellite. That might be. So where does that lead? Oh, hold on a minute, there is no... Does the castle have jump drives? I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. Interesting. It might also be a jump gate constructor. Hmm. Because there hasn't been a gate built there yet, but they might try to do it. Let's take a look. What? Can we see? Are they going past the planet or at the planet? It's a little bit hard to tell. I kind of points that it's going past the planet, but I don't know. They probably now can see some of the troops over there. Oh, and then that one put on the active sensors. That's a pretty long range to be fair. Seventy-five or oh, seventy-four million. And they can probably see even more and more. Yeah, it seems like it's going past us. Oh, right, we could see probably more with our active sensors on there. Possibly. But yeah, no, they are actually heading for the jump point there. Well, that's a bit different, I suppose. Um, where uh, do we have... No, that's the... Oiler, so here's this secondary. So instead of going to the colony, we've got five days away to actually reach the system. I want you to go to there. 10 billion kilometers range you should have there. And the. Because the Paladin has much longer range for the part of the lands. Plus the Railguns outrange their uh, part of the lances. And we got faster speeds, so we can basically just keep them at bay. Now, we don't have a massive amount of speed, just 1500. And uh, if I remember correctly, actually, can we see somewhere the components? Tennis control. So the lance is the most expensive part. No, actually, the engine is, but the lance isn't much cheaper either. So we probably don't want to start firing until we are close enough so that we can. Well, not necessarily guarantee, at least be fairly certain that we hit something. So they are really close to the jump point there. I do wonder if they are trying to build it up or something. That would actually make sense for them, because they seem to be using a lot of the gates. I mean, the I think the AI tends to like building the gates anyway, because the, they use the essentially the commercial shipping or the civilian shipping to do all the colonization and that sort of stuff for them. Okay, well let's uh, start speeding up then a little bit. Oh! Oh right, we lost the signals for the Kagera, so I was like, wait, what? Okay, we found some more minerals in here, and that's actually not too bad. Sorin, Boronite, Tritanium. They're not the most useful, but I'll make uh, sure to put a colony in there. And we have gotten the 5% reduction to the colony cost, so now everything seems to be perfectly colonizable, so to speak. That is actually very much colonizable, planet. So we'll probably want to set up a colony here soon enough, but which one was it? It was Planet 7, Moon 2, so this one. Yeah, we'll create a colony there. We do have another colony over here already. Then one over here, orbiting gas shower with a fair bit of saurium. That one didn't have Saurium, the Super Jovian didn't have Saurium. Oh, but this gas giant does have... Ooh, that's a lot of it. Alright then, well... Oh, that was a build cycle, okay. 
Um, hold on. Terraforming bonus on Planted Governor in Kiev. Plus a little reliability. Fair enough. I mean, well, no, I'm not going to show that right now. Let's go back to how to clear. Just, uh, we've been doing a fair bit of terraforming in various planets right now. A lot of factions have just started building, or rather, I've started building for them some terraforming installations just so that they can do some terraforming because the faithful seem to be busy with their terraforming for a while still. Okay, so we can actually still see that one. We lost all the other signals. But I think. First things first, we have shields on the paladin. So it should be alright. And uh, also the longer range and all that. The faster speed. So we should be able to technically wipe out the entire fleet over here. Or I could technically let them build that one up. But at the same time, I don't need that jump gate yet. So it's a matter of just getting the ships in here. Because we lost all the signals. I reckon, yeah, they probably started building out the... Oh, RC and cargo completed orders. Okay. Where is... T -t -t F. There we are. I'm just going to do... Actually, how much extra population do we have at... Um, our routine, that would be over there, or our ratios. Um, we do have half a million extra workers there. So maybe sending out some mines down that way wouldn't be a bad idea after all. Do we have... No, we haven't set up any others there. There's five automated mines, ten mines. Yeah, I'll just send more mines there, probably. Now, we don't have a massive amount of mines at all here in Viralis anymore. Down to 150, and that is not a lot. But there's not all that huge variety of resources there, either. But yes, you go there, then you go to Tourmaline. Unload all, go back to Barracuda, refuel, and repeat that four times, please. That's going to take a while. Alright then, well, um, if we go back to Harta Claire, let's just quickly check. Has our fleet arrived? No, not yet, okay. It should be arriving, though. Soon, anyway. Because we do have the jump gate, so that shouldn't be a problem. There we are. This is the second race. So that's going to take another 10 days to reach there. But I reckon we should be able to do that rather quickly. Ah, oh, Unitrain, Night Regiment. We started getting another Night Regiment. By the way, we have started moving some of the uh, brigades prepared for assaulting the diamond again. Um, not in house clear. Crozier Mors, right. We already have three assault brigades here. One has just mechanized regiments, which, all in all fairness, are not necessarily all that great. But uh, they will be able to do some damage, especially if the tank regiments can destroy some of the defenses. Then these mechanized regiments can then do a proper breakthroughs or exploit the breakthroughs, so to speak. Then over here we got two mechanized regiments, fire hurlers and knights. Knights will be, you know, doing some defending, and the fire hurlers will of course be supporting. Um, probably one of the mechanized, really. Oh, you know what? No, we're not going to support anything. I'll let them do some general fire on the enemies, hopefully. And then we got a third one, which has a tank, knight, fire hurler, and a supply regiment. So the tank regiment over there is hopefully going to do a lot of damage. I mean, the tanks that we have there, there's not many. There's only 50 tanks. Or 53. Plus... Well, I suppose you could say that that's a light tank, the PS Punisher. But yeah, we got a decent bit of tanks here, and those units will be relatively strong. I mean, they got their 60 armor and 60 hit points. And then actually in the Knight Regiments, the Knight Squads now have a 12 and a half hit points, so one hit from the enemy, most of the enemy weapons anyway, will not kill them. So that's going to basically increase the effective strength of them a bit higher, plus the armor is now higher than some of the lighter weapons that they have, have penetration. Right, but anyway, let's uh, keep on going, shall we, just so that we can reach... Actually, you know what? Well... 
I could have taken a five day increment. Now that I think of it. But I don't want to skip the build cycle too much. So I'll just take one day increments here and then once we reach that we'll take the five day increment. We should still have 18 hours more or less before the... Actually, not necessarily. Yeah, no, it's not going to be that much. Oh well, we'll just go with the one day increments and... Oh, production completed, enabling for infrastructure. Eerie, we found some geranium in it. Um, asteroid. Quickly go through Nagling, um, which has a massive population. It used to have much more, actually, but we started using that as a source for colonies right now because they got way too much stuff there compared to how much they are actually using. And we're still getting some construction factories there. I suppose what I could do... We do have some maintenance facilities in here. 30,000 capacity already. That's not too bad. I don't think we need to increase that. We still don't have a full spaceport in here. We do have some transports bringing in the stuff here, it's just taking a while. We do have a cargo salt station in the meanwhile, and we've got a lot of thorium in here. We could potentially build some fuel refineries. Nothing massive, maybe 10. Wait, 40%. We don't necessarily need more infrastructure in here because it's just a massive population. Population cap is 65 million here. Of course, uh, the civilian sector got a bit carried away in bringing stuff there. Alright, well, let's uh, approach the solar light jump point. They will probably spot us soon. Well, not quite this soon, but... Probably get... Oh, uh, oh, but... oh right, this one. I'm going to send you to the colony. It's going to take some time, but that has the tanker, so it's less than half the speed of this fleet. Oh, and in Humber... Ooh! Now that is good. Galisa at one accessibility. Corbomite, uranium, geranium. So that would actually be a perfect place for maintenance. Assuming that it can actually carry anything. And then in Hudson we found some stuff as well, although accessibilities are rather small. So we'll see about that. Uh, but yes, this was uh, A5 Moon 9. So we'll send a place a colony there. Was there? No, we haven't surveyed or gotten any results from any of the others yet in there, but there are some relatively good planets here. I mean, there's the... Oh, right, this one. It's a bit too high gravity for our humans, but it has a massive amount of resources. The accessibility is rather bad, but those might be improved by a survey. Then over here, this Venusian planet also has a pretty nice amount of stuff. Then there's a planet that potentially has some stuff, but we didn't find anything yet. So this is definitely one of the systems that we do want to set up something in. Not to mention the stuff that is easy to get here is Galasite. So this might actually be potentially an interesting location to get some orbital habitats and then get a lot of auto mines and then use the orbital habitats to have like population build another um, a space station or spaceport in here. It has all the resources that it needs to build any sort of stations that it wants to. But then we could use that space station to build more orbital habitats and all that sort of stuff. Or we could just set up a colony on one of the other moons. For example, this one. Wouldn't be too bad. It's actually not bad in temperature-wise. And minus 30 degrees is still a bit chilly, but it's manageable. Right, uh, let's go back to... Oh, right, and Hudson. So over here there was... Yeah, there's a little bit of minerals. Cobalt and Venderite. Not going to put a colony there, though. Right, let's go back to How to Clear, shall we? And we should be seeing the enemy fleet soon. They'll probably spot us before we spot them, because we do have shields on the Paladin. And they are already set up. Or set on. Uh, let's see, you got... 
Hmm. Some more resources, but nothing too impressive. Now, it is possible that they've just jumped through there. Like, some of the ships might actually have jump capability. Although, I doubt that. I think it's more likely. Yeah, there they are. I got you now. So we can see their tonnage, so that is indeed 73,000 tons, 13,000 tons, 12,000 and 6,000. I didn't realize, oh right, Megami is 13 and that is, okay. Right, well, um, we're still relatively far away, so we can move in somewhat closer. They are spotting us, probably. Oh, they're moving away. <laughs> yeah, you better run. I actually wonder, but maybe we should do uh, uh, We'll start following the castle. We'll leave the castle last, because we know that that is the most... Well, actually, no. N don't leave the castle last. Leave one of the Mogamis last. So we'll remove that, then contact, follow the... Oh, the Mogami. So we'll follow that one at... 245,000. It's kind of the safe distance away. That they can't fire at us, but we can then destroy them. And the Paladin will be the one doing the fighting, basically. Uh, so you'll, we'll start with destroying the castle. Because we know that that is a bit faster ship. And if we can get a proper hit with the lance, that's probably going to do a fair bit of damage. Now, I don't know how much... Uh, actually, with the lances, we should be able to see their armor strength rather quick. Oh, we can see the armor strength from the intelligence report, can't we? Yes, it has six layers of armor, so it's going to do, if we hit it, it's going to do at least six damage into the interior. And a hit to kill, well, it's 89. It is 89. Hmm. On the other hand, if we manage to destroy an engine, it explodes or something like that. Or the reactors, they got three reactors. Not particularly, oh right, each one of those reactors is enough to provide power for what? Oh, enough that should provide power for one and then some. Okay. Alright then, well, let's get a little bit closer. Not entirely sure where they are trying to head to. Probably just trying to escape. I mean, that wouldn't surprise me. How far are we? Still nine minutes. We should be able to take an... Oh, the moving... <laughs> Towards us. Okay, what we're gonna do is. Hmm. Technically, we'll remove last. I mean, we have the extra speed, but I just want to keep a bit of extra buffer there for the time being, so, um, contact. I will actually increase the distance, uh, Magami, follow, 250,000. It might not really make a difference. The railguns will still be able to hit there. A bit less uh, accuracy, but it is still possible. Let's take a five second increment. And did I give you the target already? I did. It's still 600,000, so that is going to take some while. You think you can defeat me? Okay, now it's basically... Let's actually focus on that one so we can see the distance. Okay, it's 300 and... Basically, we can give this orders now to fire. Could have used the open all as well, but I forget that I'd just... Do that. Intelligence update. Castle has... Oh, counter message rating of 10. Target out of range. Okay, well, yeah, that's going to be a bit of a difficulty. Oh, we fired uh, the partial lands we had basically no chance of hitting. Oh, crap. Did I really let it... Oh, yeah, they did manage to get into the... Okay. Damage report, what did we lose? Oh, it's only shield damage. And a little bit armor hits. Oh, 
Oh, right, but now we should be turning to the other direction, shouldn't we? Yes, we are. So now they got that one hit, but thanks to the shields, we didn't take any internal damage. Let's see, once we get our next... Uh, we shot our railgun, we didn't hit anything. Maintenance problem on the part of lands, of course. Chance to hit is only 18%. That's not good. They'll have to do. Whee, we got a hit from one of our, our railguns there. Armor hit, uh, energy weapon impact. Yeah, nothing too great. Here we get a partial lens hit, though. Oh, we got four hits with the railguns now. Good. And luckily, this, uh, or the. Paladin does have full crew training, so that at least helps out a fair bit in there. And crew crate isn't necessarily all that massive. Yeah, it's 22%. The shields should be regening. And let's actually have a quick look. Just, uh, yeah, it's just three points of armor damage. So, not too bad. It says armor damage taken 18, but that's not exactly true. I want to see, I know that we are a bit. Uh, out of time already, but I want to see at least one proper hit with our lands there. So the railguns didn't hit anything. Okay, railguns hit something. No hits there. Another bit of armor hit. I mean, the railguns are not going to be doing all that much damage. As soon as we destroy the castle, though, we can let them a little bit closer, and they will have a much better chance of hitting. Okay, so that is another railgun hit. And Lance is just not having great time, though. Okay, so we got two hits from the railgun. We know that they got six layers of armor, so going through that with just the railguns is going to be rather difficult. So our best hope here is just to get a hit with our um, lands, but that is not happening quite yet. Okay, we got five railgun hits. Just a little bit surely. Ooh, now we got a hit. Penetrating hit. No secondary explosion yet. I don't think we slowed them down either, but, um, well, actually, no, there's nothing new in Tillington's report. We know that we penetrated with six points, most likely, but we are definitely out of time for this episode. So, if you enjoyed this, please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Also, check out the links down below in the description. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, bye bye.